the only news team taking action for you. KIMA, Keeper Action News. Coming up this morning over in Yakima, a big increase in stolen cars will show you the latest hot spots. Plus, the latest on the drowning of a teenager in the Snake River, what actually caused that tragedy. And are you craving something sweet for breakfast? I know I always do, and we have the perfect recipe coming up in this morning's Fiesta Foods. Well, good morning. I'm Lindsay Adams. Thanks for joining us here this morning on Action News. And I'm Jay Frank. So many of us turning into amateur storm trackers last night, as you were, Lindsay, with all the lightning. I know. It woke me up, Jay. The thunder. It was, uh, it was shattering my windows, Jay. That's a little uh, dramatic. Yeah, maybe. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's, it's uh, potentially you can get those strong gusts. Yes. Usually in our part of the world, the windows are safe. Okay. All right. Well, it, it was safe, but it did wake me up, and the lightning was... Uh, Blinding. Yeah. So. And uh, for us later on today, we could have the continuation of that. Currently, we're looking at temps, well, for the most part, uh, mid 60s, 65 in Walla Walla, 60 in Pendleton. As for the winds, for the most part, calm, although if the thunderstorms return, we could see some strong gusts there. We wish you a very good morning. It is July the 17th, a Tuesday. Sunrise is about 40 minutes away. And we begin now as investigators will most likely come up with an answer today for the cause of the fire that's demolished parts of Heritage University. Action News learned all the hot spots at the top of the school's original building have stopped burning as investigators removed large pieces from that charred structure yesterday. They got a closer look inside and began the bulk of their investigation. The deputy fire marshal hopes the burn patterns will paint a clear picture as to how that fire got started. There are fires the last few years that we have a good idea this is where this is what happened, but really can't prove it 100 percent. So this one you're hoping to? We're hoping, yes. The Heritage University Early Learning Center is now open for the first time since the fire. The main university has been open full time since last Tuesday. And more local news as the Action News Crime Tracker finds it's been one of the worst years we've seen in a decade when it comes to stolen cars in Yakima. We found out almost 100 are being taken every month. Our Sarah Navoy explains what the police department is doing to put the thieves behind bars. Ramon is one of hundreds. You actually feel a... Uh... Violated. One of hundreds of victims, Yakima thieves, left feeling hopeless. His van was stolen two weeks ago. Inside, something his two year old daughter relies on. Ramon's daughter has cerebral palsy. Her braces cost nearly $2,000. Without them, she can't stand and barely crawls on her own. Without those braces, what do you, what do, you do? Without the braces, um, child won't. Have the uh, uh, the ability to be able to walk like uh, like other kids. Unlike most victims, Ramon's car was actually recovered. It was found here at the Glenmore apartment complex, and even better, nothing was even taken, not a stereo or those expensive leg braces. When I showed up to the scene, that was the first thing I looked for, and the braces were in the back of the of the van. So far this year, more than 600 people in Yakima have had their cars stolen. This month alone, nearly 100 cars were stolen in the city. Only about 20% of those were recovered. Yakima police say the same handful of thieves is responsible for the majority of auto thefts. The spike has police working with prosecutors on stronger sentences for those who get caught. Until then, thieves continue to leave people like Ramon feeling defenseless. She's my princess. You know, I take it very personal when someone um, steals from me and my family. Sarah Navoy, Action News. Now, this is the second time Ramon has had a car stolen. Police recovered both of them, but nevertheless, he's now offering a $500 reward for anyone with information about who stole his van. And Action News is always taking action for you. As we learned, the city of Yakima got a grant that will save your taxpayer money. More than $800,000 will go towards energy improvements being installed right now. They include new windows, lighting, and HVAC systems at half dozen city buildings. These include Yakima City Hall, several fire stations, and the Southeast Community Center. Yakima expects the updates to save thousands of dollars each year. They're more efficient, and uh, they're running 
uh, at the same values, but they're running for less dollars. That's where there is a win-win for the for the city and also the taxpayers, who are ultimately paying the operational costs. I got a case on her. They just gave me a case on her. Most of the items replaced were more than 30 years old. Action News is continuing to cover a drowning in the Snake River that took the life of 14-year-old Timothy Bowden. Now, we've learned the boat was overloaded when it sank near Burbank. The Walla Walla County Sheriff's Office tells us there were no structural problems with that vessel. Weight was considered a significant contributing factor to the cause of it capsizing. Five people were on that 12-foot boat. The prosecutor still has to release an official report, but charges of reckless endangerment could possibly be filed. Well, a Richland man remains in a medically induced coma nearly two weeks after he had a run-in with bouncers at a Kennewick nightclub. We spoke with friends and family of Ben Ensign. They say doctors are still struggling to control the massive swelling in his brain. The 31-year-old received a traumatic brain injury on the 4th of July outside of Jack Diddley's in downtown Kennewick. Witnesses say he was picked up by two security staff and then thrown onto the sidewalk on his head. He's been in critical condition ever since, and now Action News has learned the community is holding a fundraising benefit for Ensign. The Branding Iron will host a taco feed and auction next month. Everyone is invited to attend. It all gets underway Thursday, August 9th at 8 p.m. And coming up this morning, the battle for the White House rages on, and we'll show you the latest jabs between President Obama and Mitt Romney coming up later on Action News. But for now, we'll check in with weather. A local thunder and lightning show may have kept some of you up late last night. This is in the Tri-Cities. This thunderstorm moved in with a vengeance. The sky was lighting up, and the thunder was booming, and the rain was coming down in buckets. So can we expect something like this again? For the answer, we'll go ahead and turn it over to our Jay Frank, who is over there at the Weather Center right now. And Jay, how are things looking? Yeah, a spectacular video that we captured there. Lindsay, I know you were trying to sleep through it with no success, right? I did try, Jay, and it sure woke me up, even with earplugs. No luck. <laughs> <laughs> the earplugs didn't do the job. Well, we could have a repeat performance once again tonight. You might have to keep those plugs there on the nightstand at the ready. As for the morning drive, no real problems. Maybe some puddles out there from uh, still left over from the rainfall we've seen. We'll detail the full storm tracker forecast right after this. Weather every 10 minutes. Jay Frank here wishing you a good morning. We're so thankful you, you click us on to help you start your day. It's nice to see a, a pretty sunrise this morning with some puddle spots out there for some from some overnight thunderstorms. And this afternoon into the early evening and first part of the nighttime, we do expect the return of thunderstorms. For the most part, a mix of clouds and sun. And then we'll just, what do they say, rinse and repeat? Is that how it goes? Tomorrow, more of the same. Uh, for our weather as we're kind of locked into this stormy weather pattern. A weather photo to enjoy. How about this brilliant sunrise out there in Hermiston? Barb capturing that shot. Uh, thank you so much for that with the sun breaking through the clouds there. We enjoy it, Barb. Uh, whenever you send in a photo, so keep them coming on in. And I, I know it took me a couple weeks to get to this one. Doesn't mean I didn't love it. Just, you know, how the inbox gets stacked up sometimes. So happy to get that out here for you, Barb. Uh, just email JF, J A Y F, at keepertv.com with your uh, weather pictures. 67 degrees in the Tri Cities, and we're seeing mostly sunny skies. As for Yakima, been locked into the mid 60s for the most part throughout the last couple hours or so. As for the weather headed our way once again, the heat returning from the south for us, but it's being driven now by this uh, low pressure system. There, there is a cool pocket of air down there, but it's uh, spinning us moisture and also uh, thunderstorms, and it'll continue to do that later on today. Over the past 12 hours, this is kind of the dramatic convergence we see here of two storm systems, one for the Mid-Columbia Basin, the Yakima Valley, the other traversing from east to west and kind of meeting there near Wenatchee. As for our chance today of thunderstorms, we're going to put it all the way up at 60%. That's for the Mid-Columbia Basin. Less of a chance in Yakima, but still the potential all across the broadcast area for that instability mid-afternoon into tonight, and then cloudy skies overnight into tomorrow morning. There's a rainfall future cast, so lots of activity across the Pacific Northwest, fairly involved, but starting to clear out by the time we get into tomorrow morning. But we do expect another dose of that activity later on in the day tomorrow. As for the winds, for the most part, they're calm, although, of course, with a thunderstorm, you can get those strong gusts. 
Friday, the breezes will pick up just a bit for us, but beautiful weather conditions Thursday and Friday as we dry out. Pollen count is reduced, grasses and nettle a bit of an issue, and the UV index elevated, as you'd expect this point in July, a level 9 out of 12. Here's the day ahead in Yakima, morning to noon, 76 at 9 a.m. By noontime, warming up to 86, pleasant conditions, and a daytime high today, just pushing into the 90, slightly above average, 92 in Yakima, 94 in Ellensburg, mid-90s throughout the lower valley, again with the slight chance of thunderstorms as we make it later into the afternoon. For the Tri-Cities, uh, better bet for thunderstorms, 77 at 9 a.m., 86 by noontime. Just after that is when that storm window, as we like to call it, opens up. 94, the projected daytime high. 90 in Pendleton, 90 in Walla Walla, 93 in Hermiston, 96 in Prosser, and 94 in Othello. Uh, 94 is a projected daytime high. Typical this time of year is 92 in the Tri Cities. Next week is when we get to that 93 historical average daytime high, and that's as hot as we see on our calendar. So we are entering into the warmest part of the year. 65 is your overnight low, cloudy with thunderstorms. Then Partly cloudy getting into tomorrow morning. Temps low 90s, then mid 80s for Yakima. Hey, it looks pretty good. Tri Cities, too. Weather to celebrate by the time we get to Thursday, Friday, and Saturday with plenty of sunshine and then a fairly hot weekend. Stable weather, mid 90s. All right, Jay, it's looking gorgeous, looking yeah. perfect. And uh, we do have some summertime news as well coming up. It's it calls for some sweet treats this time of year, and that's what we're getting in this morning's Fiesta Foods Kitchen. It's cheese blonde, so stay tuned for that recipe up next on Action News. Well, we're back with our air quality outlook. Conditions right now, we don't show this graphic as much because just about every morning, this is what you see. Excellent air quality all across the Yakima Valley into Kittitas County, across the Mid-Columbia Basin, foothills of the Blues as well. It's all courtesy of the Oregon and Washington Departments of Environmental Quality. And only on Action News this morning, it's time now for another Fiesta Foods sizzling recipe. And this one is for all you dessert lovers out there. Got a sweet tooth, Lindsay? Oh, you know I do, Jay, every morning. I know you do. <laughs> Jennifer Ann Wilson and Chef Veronica making cheese flan in the kitchen this morning. All right, good morning and welcome to another edition of Fiesta Foods Sizzling Recipes. I'm excited. I'm Jennifer Ann Wilson, your host, and I'm here today with Veronica, the deli manager at Fiesta Foods. And Veronica has an amazing, amazing, I guess it's a dessert, but I, I'm dessert. pretty happy to be eating this for breakfast today. Oh, yeah. What are we making? We're making a flan. The difference about this flan is uh, cheese flan. We're going to use a cup of sugar. We have this sulka, which is um, pure cane sugar. Okay, we had this at the store. We're going to use eight slices of yellow cheese, one tablespoon of vanilla, imitation vanilla. Or right, and we're putting vanilla. it on this blender, right? We're going to every, blend everything. So nice. we're going to use one can of condensed milk and one can of evaporated milk. Sweet. Okay, so we're going to pour everything together. Okay. And oh, we're going to use five eggs also. All right, so and that, is this my job? That's going to okay. be your job. All right, I'm going to crack the five eggs and, and just maybe you can tell me what you're putting in there as you put it okay. in. We're going to be using uh, now the condensed milk. Okay, that's okay. The condensed milk. Oh. This is the condensed milk. I thought this was. So condensed milk is different from evaporated. Yeah, the condensed milk, milk is the sweet milk. Oh. So you have and a can of evaporated. And that I never knew. I never knew that was different. That's right. Got a rag. Have my. I have it right here. Oh, perfect. Thank you. I never realized that condensed and evaporated milk were two different things. This is new. I've eaten. Yeah, they're I've eaten flan things. a lot and I love it, but I've never made it. One tablespoon of vanilla. Is this and a we have this like traditional right here. recipe, or is this something you learned along the way, or is this something you learned? Oh, from this is family? traditional. It makes, but this is a family recipe. Actually, my mom really? loves to do this one. So uh, you can also make it with uh, coffee. You know, and instead of use cheese, you can use coffee. Coffee. Two tablespoons of coffee, really? or uh, shredded coconut also. All so right. We're gonna get this ready to go and put that in the blender. Get this blended up. That's right. All right. Okay. Let's go. All right. <laughs> we're going to blend, really blend this up and we'll be back in just a few minutes. And uh, stay with us. We're going to be testing it out in the next segment. 
and you could stay tuned to the next half hour for part two of this morning's sizzling recipe. And Jay, we do have some very good news this morning. I want to take a moment to wish my great grandma a very happy 100th birthday. It's Mary Furusaki. She turns 100, a centenarian, and she even got a birthday card from the president. Really? Yes. Wow, that's amazing. <laughs> yes, really? Michelle and and the president himself signed it. So very cool. You think if I live to a hundred, maybe I'd give you it? You will absolutely. Mm, well, <laughs> uh, happy birthday to Mary, of course. Yes. And Lindsay, I see where you get the gorgeous looks. Oh, well, th oh, you're too kind. Sure. Well, thank you, thank you. She's in Orange County, California, right now, and. Uh, probably out there celebrating. So, uh, a very happy birthday to her. And we do have much more local news, Jay, uh, coming up next. But how's that weather looking in the meantime? Well, for us, I don't know about Orange County, but uh, we'll have a nice start to the day. Then the potential for thunderstorms later on. A quick look at daytime highs for us in Benton County, pushing into the mid-90s. Calm winds for the most part until the storms hit. And our first look at Adams and Franklin counties this morning. Connell, 90 degrees, 94 in Othello, 94 in Pat. Back after this. It's the dog days of summer. Lindsay, can you tell us who's in the doghouse? Absolutely, Jay. This is Molly. She's so cute, an English bulldog. She's just a bulldog puppy, but Molly enjoys running in the tall grass on a great summer day. What a life she has. She's got it good in Tushy, and it's 91 degrees today with some afternoon thunderstorms, Molly. And in more local news now, neighborhoods known for being calm and quiet in Yakima are seeing some unusual activity. Action News uncovered an increase in car prowls and break-ins. Now, they're happening mostly west of 40th Avenue near Summit View. Heather Walker has more on that. This neighborhood off 65th and Summit View is known for safe, quiet streets. That is, until recently. Ashley Caldwell was walking out of her boyfriend's home when she got a surprise. My car was parked right here in the yard, and you know, I see this girl crawling on the ground. So at first, I was thinking, well, is it my younger brother's girlfriend, or you know, just trying to scare me, play a prank or something? It wasn't a prank. Instead, she walked into a car prowl. She pops up on my driver's side door, and I, I clicked my phone on. She saw the light come on, and she took off running. That way. Not everyone's been so lucky. Over the last couple months, there's been a spike in car prowls and break ins happening west of 40th Avenue near Summit View, reaching as far as 96. Since the end of May, 64 have been reported. That's extremely high for the area. Honestly, I think maybe because it is a nicer neighborhood and people think it's okay to leave their car unlocked. Police say they don't know why crooks are now hitting neighborhoods on the west side of town, but they're asking people to report any suspicious behavior. Ashley has changed her behavior to protect herself. I make sure that I have nothing in the car when I leave it, and I make sure all the windows rolled up. Small steps that could make a big difference to prevent becoming a victim. Heather Walker, Action News. Now, at least three witnesses say they saw a man and a woman breaking into cars together around that area of Summit View. Police can't say exactly how many car prowls they may be connected to. And in this morning's health alert, more countries are keeping minors away from tanning beds. Researchers suggest indoor tanning can increase the risk of skin cancer. A study in the archives of dermatology reports 11 nations now have laws that ban minors from tanning indoors. That's up from just two in 2003. Ten are European countries. The other is Brazil. The U.S. has no federal law restricting indoor tanning, but some states do. Covering election 2012 for you this morning, President Barack Obama and Mitt Romney traded more jabs yesterday. The president citing a study which says Romney's economic plan would create more than 800,000 jobs for foreign countries. Romney accused the president of cronyism. He says the White House provided loans and grants to several companies connected to the president's political supporters. And some good news now. A Tri-Cities man made the trip to Yakima to figure out how he'll be spending a ton of money. It came back $2 million richer from that trip to Yakima. Rodney Worthington is his name. He walked into the Fred Meyer on West 10th in Kennewick. Little did he know, yeah, he uh, walked out of there with an IOU for $2 million, courtesy of the Washington Lottery. He's a local electrician for the Hanford Vit plant. He got that big oversized check for a Powerball win at the Lotto offices yesterday. He had an oversized smile when he spoke to Action News. <laughs>
there was a guy that I work with actually standing next to me looking at some kind of lotto board thing when I scanned it off. And I looked over at him and I was just like, I think I might have just won the lotto. And he's like, no. <laughs> And Rodney actually doubled his winnings simply because he went with the power play option. It only cost him an extra dollar. He plans to pay off some bills and his mortgage. Now, Jay, if you won that money, would you uh, retire or keep on working? I'd buy your great-grandmother the biggest 100th birthday present oh, there is. That is so nice of you. And a lifetime membership to Disneyland down there in Orange <laughs> County where she lives. So thoughtful. She would love that, Jay. Thank it's you. It's your grandma's 100th birthday today. How about that? <laughs> That's right. Well, well, thanks, Jay. How's that weather looking? For great, great grandma, right? Yes, my right. great grandma. Perfect. All right. Weather looks excellent for us, Lindsay, for the first part of the day. Then, well, we got the potential for some thunderstorms for us. There's the five day forecast. Tomorrow, some instability as well. Temps in the low 90s today and tomorrow, maybe mid 90s in the Tri City. So hot. But uh, the weekend, well, shaping up nicely, drying out for us. And for the most part, comfortable conditions Thursday, Friday. Now we're back after this with your top stories.